Let's take a look again at our block diagram and talk about the interrupts that can be generated by a timer. So remember we have the input and the input could be if the TCS bit is zero, then the input is the peripheral bus clock. And if it's a one, then the input is, and I'll talk about timer one, it's just to be concrete. Then the input is the T1 clock external pin on the PIC32. So that's the input. It goes over to our prescaler. Oops. Prescaler one, which may reduce the number of pulses. And then it goes over to the actual counter itself, timer one. And remember we have a period register where we can set the value at which timer one rolls over. Period register one. And if we don't set any value in there, it's going to default to two to the 16 minus one. So it's going to let the counter count up all the way before rolling over. Okay, but what happens here now is when the period register matches the count on the timer, so on match, we can generate an interrupt if we want. And this is something we have to decide when we set up the interrupt bits for this particular for this particular timer. So we have the option now of every time the timer counts up to the, the value on the period register to generate an interrupt. And one reason we might want to do that is if we're doing real-time control and we want to generate an interrupt at a fixed frequency, uh, maybe at 1,000 hertz, then we can set the period register so that there's a match every one millisecond. And then we generate an interrupt, jump to an interrupt service routine that does something and then returns. So this is a very common use of timers to generate fixed frequency uh, control routines.